All right. That's our new intro song right there. The wine being poured perfectly into our glass by Triborn. Try what kind of wine do we have for our last fan question episode of the year? Well, you know, we got to celebrate the year with a little bit of CSUN, a 2020 California Pinot Noir. <laughs> it's perfect. With a twist off cap. <laughs> Dude, I, uh, I don't think I've ever sat in this seat before. You've never blue couched it? No. I've never blue couched it ever since yeah, Rosie swept you. through. <laughs> yeah. Because you knew that Rosie's butt sweat is on her. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like looking at the audio levels, making sure I'm not screaming at everyone. I think this is good. Yeah, you got a loud voice. Yeah. Cheers, brother. Cheers. Good year. Another year in the books. Another year in the books. Pretty much. Yeah, I'm leaving for, um, we always do like kind of a winter Yosemite trip. Mm-hmm. So I leave on Thursday. Well, <sighs> by the so time cool. this comes out. Are you going to camp? No, 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 no. Oh. We, so we camped last December. And we woke up and it was snowing. We had like a couple inches of snow around our tent. Ugh. And we swore off cold weather camping after well, that. Also, Delaney's pregnant. So. And, yeah, <laughs> and Delaney. Well, that wouldn't, that wouldn't hold her back. Like she's still trying to charge. Charging. Yeah. Because we're still like going to do like all the hikes we like to do and stuff. But It's an excuse to spoil for her to spoil yeah, exactly. herself though. Yeah. Like, so we. Buy we, me a cabin, Charlie. Yeah, so we, we got a cabin um, and we got a, a fun crew. We got, because we always try to take a bunch of people. Sick. And so we, like two years ago, it was like me, D, Sponsel, Clays, Jordan, Mm -hmm. Katie Spieler, and my older brother always comes. Nice. And so this year we got Therese Cannon. She's never been taking her. Miles Partain's joining. Wow. Uh, Father Mesco, he's coming. Oh, what a crew. Yeah. And I think uh, Cammie Manuel might be a late ad. Okay. So legit. Yeah. So we and we always like it's our favorite place in the world. So we just get a kick out of Heck showing yeah. people around. I know. I still haven't actually been into Yosemite Park as much times as I've been. That's up crazy, there. especially for how much you love nature too. Well, I just if I'm going up there, I'm going to go to my sister's, which is one pass yeah. over, and it's very nice as yeah. well. So yeah. I just don't go, but I, I wanted to. Yeah, and you're, well, we'll get you out there. We'll have a, yeah. we'll have to do like a sandcast retreat. Maybe when it's December. a little warmer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so good with the. I don't think the camera. Yeah, can what see. are these called? <laughs> My mother-in-law gave me the everyone in the family these. Uh, what what would you call these? Uh, like moccasins? I don't know what I, that is. But I have I have moccasins. I feel like that's a proper name. They're not. They're not moccasins. They look cozy. What does it say on the bottom? Bombas. Bomba. You got a bombas. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I'm ready to go to Hawaii, to be honest. Yeah. I was just out there, and I uh, just came back basically to get Naya, and uh, it was a mileage trip, but yeah, man, uh, I'm built for the warmth, for yeah. sure. We gotta I do... came back, and I've just been like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> and for our listeners who are not in California, you think we're being babies, it is it is cold here. I mean, it's in the like low 40s when I wake up. It's it's chilly. Yeah, that's cold. So we got to do a double sandcast retreat. We got to do like a winter Hawaii. Oh, there we go. Yeah. And then exactly. a little winter training camp out there in Hawaii. And then we can do kind of like a mid-season break in, yeah. in Yosemite. Just that works. Less hiking for you. Not a, not a training Yosemite. <laughs> not a training Yosemite trip. Daytime hiking, I can do it. Yeah. It'll be manageable. Yeah. I'm in. <laughs> Just need a fireplace. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, we can do that. Me and fire get along well. Well, normally, one, normally we have Savvy to ask the questions. Savvy is on a, an SOB trip. Mm. So SOB. Our, uh, and so she loves those things. South of the border. Yeah. There's a lot of vacations. Sounds great. I actually want to do a sandcast. A couple of people vacation. have been asking for it. We just need a property. Yeah. I can make it happen. Well, we're working on it, people. We're working on it. <laughs> It's going to be expensive, though. <laughs> <laughs> it would be fun. We could do like a live fan Q&A. For sure. At the Sandcast Camp. For sure. We bring some other pros out. Yeah. Just full volley vacation. There's some North Shore properties with volleyball courts that are just insane. Really? Yeah. Could be fun. Good scoop. We'll see. We'll see. I just need to buy a property. <laughs> We're getting there. That's next after. Yeah, I just need like, I just need, I just need, I don't know, $2 million. That's it. 
We're getting there. <laughs> volley. The volley world. Yeah. <laughs> well, normally we spend a lot of time kind of the first half hour horsing around, but we have we had so many good fan questions. Like, oh, let's dive in. Like we've had an abundance of them on all of them. We, we get more mm. every time we ask for them. Yeah. Because our I think three of our top ten this year most downloaded our fan questions, and I think four of our top ten all time. Our oh, that's questions. crazy. And yeah. So, and I, I didn't even ask this time because you usually <laughs> yeah. get so many. It's yeah. like, well, here's the other 50 that we yeah. add in. So if your question's not being answered, uh, you just know that you're just competing with probably another <laughs> 100 questions. Yeah. And so we'll, uh, I tried to order them in like a reasonable order to, to chat. Um, so our first one, and from good friend Kelly Reeves, Delaney's Love partner, that Kelly's Delaney's partner this season. She sent like five. <laughs> it was great. Love it. Um, and uh, I like this one, and it's kind of a, a good way to for us to like get into it, sort of like recap in the year. If you had to summarize your season in one word or phrase, what would it be? Hmm. I don't think we've had a guest on the show ask a fan question before. I think uh, it's, cool. it's funny. Uh, we, we should, if we've never had like an in-person one, I thought that's what you meant. But yeah, we've never had like one of our own. Yeah, that's guess. what I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sum up the year in one word. Uh, or phrase. Roller coaster. Roller coaster, I like that. <laughs> Any explanation? What about for you? Oh, I mean, I thought it was just one word or <laughs> one phrase. Well, you can do <laughs> roller coaster and it was like, hyphen, you know? But then we get the, what's the definition of that roller coaster of the year? Um, well, we just kind of shit the bed on the world tour a little bit. Partially just due to lack of wanting to be there and energy and, you know, there's, the energy just wasn't there and we had to dedicate ourselves to the AVP. Early in the year, like, yes. I mean, literally, this is my first year since 2014, but basically in my whole career that I was not playing in Olympic qualifying because I had missed those other two yeah, years. Which is nuts. So, yeah, for we, we, I personally, and I think it was a little bit of a mistake, I was like, all right, we can finally just say screw world tour. Like, obviously, we're going to play and go hard and whatnot. But, like, we can play all the AVPs and, like, have fun and, like, really yeah. go for that. And that's what we did. And look at the results. Like, we didn't <laughs> perform all that well internationally. Obviously, we got COVID uh, in the ninth place match in um, World Champs. And there's, a, you know, little stuff here and there. Everyone's got little excuses. But for the most part, yeah, we just didn't perform all that well. We didn't have a coach. We lost our coach at the beginning of the season. But um, you kind of get what you asked for. Which is why this year I'm being more careful about what yeah. words I use uh, in terms of like setting intentions for our team. Yeah, but you ended ended on. Uh, I would say if it was a roller coaster, you you ended back on top. Yeah, I think that's something I take pride in. Uh, me and Hayden always, we were talking about it actually. We always ended seasons well. Yeah, and I think it, a lot of it comes down. At least he like credits it to a, to a work ethic and stuff you know teams get worse throughout the year and their bodies dwindle and like uh it just becomes harder and harder whereas we kind of were always like pressing pressing and like sprint through the finish kind of yeah. thing which is why it was really cool for me to play with Hayden in this last which what could be his last event looks like he'll come and play one or so next year but it was kind of his last legit event where he's like really going for the finals not yeah. to say he won't next year but yeah I was like, okay, John Hyden, with how he's done his whole career, he deserves to sprint through the finish mm -hmm. and like just go for it. And so that's why I wanted. I really wanted to at least make the finals. Yeah. And um, getting the win would have been epic. Yeah, that would have been awesome. It would have been epic. But I mean, pff, the fact that it was like Taylor and Phil. Yeah, and a great final. It was a good final. Yeah. Both those matches were really good. Yeah. Really close. We just, um, it was just like, yeah. After 18, they kind of pulled away. Well, yeah. I guess we went to overtime in, like, two of them. Yeah. I mean, your quarterfinal was, like, a 27-25, 22-20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a great match. It was. Good volley. Yeah. It, uh, I feel like Hayden's unbelievable because with athletes who stick around as long as he does, 
Like you'll get like, you know, a Jerry Rice playing with like the Raiders. Right, right, and right. And you get like you just see them become very mortal and flawed, right, right, right. And, and they just start to they start to be like bad versions of themselves. Well, that's why he was so pissed with his result in yeah. Chicago. I talked to him about it, and he's like. I just knew that I can still win. I didn't want to yeah. go out. Like, I put in the work. I wanted yeah. to prove it to myself and everybody that I still got it. And I yeah. didn't want to go out on that last place in Chicago. So it meant a lot for me to take the call and, like, actually put in work and prep and and go for it with him. Yeah. Um, and, like, you know, I was setting him. I didn't feel like I was setting a 50-year-old. I was like, yeah. this guy's just siding out. Like, he got majority of the serves, obviously. Yeah. It was fun for me because I got to um, kind of change up my attacking style and yeah. do a little bit of options, a few jump sets here and there just to like yeah. get the feel for that once more because I haven't been able to do it in a long time. And then also just remember the certain things that worked really well for us. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I remember the feel of playing with Haydn and how it's different and hopefully Trev's down to apply some things here and there that I've – that I remember and learn. Um, it's just like a flow with yeah. Hayden. Like you feel each other a lot. Yeah. And you change based on how you feel and like how loud you are. And like, it, it was fun. It was yeah. cool. And that's, I mean, playing you guys, it's like, damn, you guys picked this up fast. <laughs> yeah. Just how, like whenever, if Jam were to serve Hayden sort of in the seam, I mean, you were instantly at the pin. Mm. And he was like shoveling yeah. it over to you. And then Hayden sprinting this way. Yeah. I'm like, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> like where do I go? Yep. <laughs> no, totally. That didn't take long. It was just a lot. Yeah. It it really was weird because I right away just kind of like remembered how I felt. Like, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. This is the feel. Go here, I go there. First practice. It was yeah. just like booyah. Yeah. It worked. Yeah. And it, it was it was cool because I love hiding. And it was cool just, like, getting dinner with you guys before. Yeah. Um, and just, like, chatting with him and then playing against him. Because, like, it's cool to see him after such a brilliant career. And yeah. he didn't have the year that he wanted. Right. To end the season, like, on such a cool note. Right. And I don't – maybe that's the last tournament he plays. Maybe not. Right. But either way, like, he's 50. He's still got it. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's insane. He's going to come this far. Like, it's not just to, like it, – it just shows that he came this far, like, eight – years <clears throat> eight years longer than he needed to to like prove that he could play at yeah. an older age and just to like say he played at 50 it yeah. wasn't that it was like no like i still got still it got at it. 50 yeah watch how watch how i can prepare my body and and the game and my game and my arm and everything so he got to prove that and it wasn't like i came all this way just to like play at 50 no it was like I can ball. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so if it was a if it was a roller coaster for you, and and I, I mean, obviously I had the questions before, so I had I got to like think about a couple of them, and for me, I would say that this year was sort of uh, kind of pure, in a way, because mm. it was this year was so different. You know, everybody knows that Delaney's pregnant now, um, but she when she was pregnant for the first time, and she let people know on Instagram because it was like a year like a week ago, mm. that she had a miscarriage at like 10 or 11 weeks. Mm -hmm. And that was like unplanned. We found out the day after me and Tim beat Billy and Andy in the country quota uh. for Eat to Pema. And I came home from recording an episode here, actually. I don't know where you were. You might have been in Hawaii. But it was me and Savvy and Therese. And so I walked back home, walk in the door, and Delaney's like sobbing on the couch. Like, I thought someone died. Oh God. And she was like, I'm pregnant. I was like, all right, well, that's better than someone dying. Right. <laughs> so she took like, I was like, well, let's take a couple tests. She took two more tests. And I was like, all right, let me make sure these are legitimate. So right. I took one just to make sure yeah, I wasn't pregnant. You took one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, like we weren't like ready. And, like that was the moment I was like, all right, I might have to like stop playing. Because uh, the right. fall and winter is always a weird financial time right. for me. Because like all my contracts are through the beach season. Oh, yeah, totally. And so I was like. Well, I'm not making any money. We're gonna have a kid, right? Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. So I was like, all right, I'll go to Brazil with Tim, and then I'll like figure out a job. Uh -huh. um, but D was like, I mean, she was freaking out. She's like, I'm not done playing. I just signed this contract to coach a pep, and she was freaking out. And she hadn't really like embraced it until she went over Zana's house, and she was like expecting. Zana to like cry it out with her and kind of be a sob fest. And Zana's like, "You're having a baby!" Right? And she was stoked on it. 
And that like shifted Delaney's perspective on the whole thing. Right. And she comes home. She's like, like I want to be a mom. Right. And she like totally bought in. And so uh-huh. we're like, all right, well, let's just get ready to be parents. And we right. didn't really tell anyone. So like last Christmas, we had like a little baby stocking like next uh-huh. to the tree and everything. And then she ended up uh, having a miscarriage. Um, ended up like she was healthy and, and all right. But that like totally shifted both of our perspectives on volleyball. So I was like, all right, well, we both know that we want to be parents now. Right. And so I came into this season knowing that this, with like sort of a sense of finality, that this is like the last year I'm just going to be able to like, all right, Cody Caldwell, you want to go to Cape Town in four days? Right, like, yeah, right, right. Sure, let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I've always, like I think obviously my career as a player is different than yours where mm-hmm. I'm not providing for my family right. via my successes in tournaments. Right. And so I was like, I'm just going to play whatever I want, whenever I want, like, I'm not going to play for points. Go for it. I'm not going to play for whatever. It's just like if I want to go to Switzerland with Jake McNeil, I'm going to do that because I don't right. know if I'm going to be able to do that again. Right, right, right. Um, and so I just played like whatever. Mm, and I just played like for Beach's sake. How did you feel you performed? And it was funny because like the moment that I was sort of like let go of a lot of the like extrinsic stuff that comes yeah. with it when I'm like, oh, we need points, we need prize money, we need this. Yeah. Like I played like the best I've ever played mm-hmm. by a long shot. Hmm. It was cool because I was playing with with JM, who approaches it so similar, where he's never like as soon as you lose with JM, he's like, oh, "All right, man, like let's go get a beer." <laughs> yeah. Like, and he is never bothered. He just loves playing beach volleyball. Right. And he's not trying to like climb the ladder. He's not trying to go to the Olympics. Yeah. He doesn't care about getting on a stipend or whatever. He just right. like he just plays. Right. And so we both had that same mindset. It's such a unique sport that that that's possible first yeah. of all, and that it's also fully blended in with the professional yeah like full-time professionals yeah it's so interesting it it was it was crazy how good we played but i mean it really it did take the sting out of losing mm. a lot like we lost in australia and i was like pissed about it for like an hour and i was right. like all right well, let's, i'm here for six days let's go surfing right <laughs> <laughs> i went surfing yeah you know? i mean that's the beauty of of beach volleyball as well right is like yeah the experiences you get are insane because it's global. Yeah. And, yeah, you lose. You end up... The the more you lose, the more you see yeah. in the world, the more yeah. you explore. Yeah, and it's, you know, and if I were... And it's so tough because when you do lose, you don't want to be a tourist. You, I almost feel guilty about it, right? about being a tourist because it's like that's not what I'm here to do. Right, 100%. Um, but towards the end of the year, like when I knew, especially after everyone found out that Dee was pregnant, like, yeah, I'm going to go like hike around national parks in Cape Town and For do sure. whatever. And, yeah. and it's not that like, I'm definitely not going to stop playing, but I'll just be a little more selective, yeah. I think, with the finances. It was funny after Cape Town and everyone found out, like you and Trevor were both like, maybe it's time to stop taking $2,000 trips to Cape Town when you know you're going to lose money. I was like, right. yeah. <laughs> I've known this since the beginning of the yeah, year. Yeah, right. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. So it was uh it was fun to play a year like that where I was just like, screw it. Like yeah. and, and that also went towards like sitting out tournaments I didn't want to play. Mm-hmm. Like there was an A V P next in San Antonio that was a qualifier for New Orleans. Yeah. I was like, I don't want to go to San Antonio. Mm-hmm. So I'm not gonna play. So I went to New Orleans with D and golfed instead. <laughs> yeah. No, that was definitely the call. And well, it's a unique you've created a unique situation where you very where you can do that. Yeah. And you can still make your main living off the sport, which is writing for it. Yeah. And it was pretty rad. And it was cool, like, you know, learning a new skill set with commentating. And that's something that's been a blast. I've loved that. I know. I'm I actually love it too, to be honest. Like I wouldn't mind getting back into it. I'm just so it's like I either have my main focus or I don't, you know? Yeah. I can't really dabble in all these different things and fully focus on just trying to be the best at volleyball as well. Yeah. So and you have that enough, stuff like, will come. Yeah. And There's think, podcasts is at my house, so it's, yeah. this is pretty great for me. And I've found that doing the podcast is actually great training for commentating. Yeah, oh, 100%. Because, like, none of our podcasts, we're never scripted. Yeah, exactly. We go in and you just sort of figure out stuff on the fly. And commentating, you can't script anything. You don't know what's going to happen. So you just sort of figure it out as you go. Yeah, it's like, um, I mean, it's like any, performing in anything I've found is just learning how to be neutral minded yeah it's it just comes down to like mindfulness really and yeah. just being neutral yeah and aware and then you're able to take in information and 
<clears throat> and then neutrally give it back out. But when you're like in your head on for anything, yeah, you're done. Yeah. So I've I found that the podcast is like the single best training I could have done for commentating yeah. as someone with a print journalism background. I mean, it's also like a a broadcasting resume, right? Yeah. Like who are they going to hire? The guy who has <laughs> five years of podcasting in or yeah. none? Exactly. Yeah. So those are our years in a word, Kel. There you go, Roller Kel. coaster and pure. <laughs> uh, but Kelly does have the next question, which I thought was fun. She asked five. We're only picking two from Kelly. Uh, the most unexpected tournament that you found surprisingly fun? Unexpected. Uh, I mean, I guess Florida, the last one for me. Last one. Definitely unexpected and wasn't like looking forward <laughs> to it. That was great. In the middle of Florida swamps. <laughs> yeah. But I had a great time because we brought the family and Hayden's family was there and um, I was able to really like be free and play a different style of volleyball and kind of yeah. like test things out. Um, so that was fun. And and the venue, like the sand itself and the sand pit and whatnot was, was enjoyable and easy. Yeah. I think, uh, gosh, there's, there was a lot of ones that were really fun. I think, uh, I'd go with Denver. Huh. Denver was cool. It, um, I always wanted to play there. Denver was packed also. Yeah. Really? Like fans showed up for that place. There's a, a good because that's where so the um the south of the border volley vacations that's like the hub. Okay. And so you have all these sob fans out there who have been starved of volleyball. There I, there hadn't been an AVP there in like 20 years. Right. And so and Phil showed up as well, mm. which helped a lot. With Sutton. With Sutton, yeah. Mm. And so Denver was awesome. There's a lot of people there. The site was really cool. Me and Delaney stayed at uh, this girl Ali Longo's place. Do yeah, you know Ali? she went to Hawaii, I think. Yeah, yeah. She played with she's good friends with Hart. I don't know her, but yeah. Um, so that was super fun. Did a little top golf, and we got fifth, which is sweet. Love that. Beat Andy and Miles. It's the first time we beat the one seed this year. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so that was good. Miles Evans. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. There you go, guy. So it was. That was fun. Yeah, that was fifth. That qualified us for Fort Lauderdale, mm. and that was JM's first uh, main draw was Fort Lauderdale. Oh, really? So it was uh that was a we cool we play one. you the first match too? Yeah, Fort Lauderdale. You should have taken a set off us we too. Have, yeah, we should have done that twice. Well, you know, I like to dangle <laughs> that carrot a little bit. You are the carrot. Hey, buddy, go you see this? See you this want it? 18 14. You want it? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So moving on, we have uh the the hot topic always is um partnerships. Mm -hmm. So everyone wants to predict new teams for next season. Who's partnering up for Paris? Um, so we'll start with you. You and Trev locked in? It looks like it as of now. I don't think there's any um, partner changes on the Except for, uh, men's Chase, side, really. Chase and Reed? I don't well, know if that's like uh, a that's locked like a, deal. but seems like a random thing because Reed didn't even play for – the whole season. Yeah, I don't know what his international points will look like, but his AVPs were frozen. Yeah, whatever. So I'm um, sure. I I didn't see that. Think of that as like a full yeah, time. Cause, cause and just, then what's so Troy? I guess would be interesting. And then um, Partain and Benish. They have they're already a team, but they haven't played AVP together. So they'll be yeah. a team on the AVP, and they'll be really good. Um, I think the other teams are sticking together. It's just Troy and Buttinger where we kind of everyone kind of thought they were going to break up. Yeah. And then so Troy's a floater. Miles Evans is kind of a floater. Miles Paul Lottman. Lottman's like a power player floater right now. He's like third in the U.S. Oh, for points, yeah. <laughs> yeah, really. He flew up there. Well, yeah. That's just the nature of this system. Yeah. Um, and I can't think of any anyone else who's like a – a top tier talent who's sort of floating for the men. Mm. The women, it seems like Betsy and Julia Scholes are pretty locked in. Uh, Kelly Chang and Sarah Hughes are obviously pretty damn good. Yeah, <laughs> they haven't lost a set in three tournaments. Really? Yeah, they won. So they won the Huntington Tour Series, which everyone expected, um, and they they won by an average of twenty one to twelve. That was their average set score. Oh. Then they go to Tor Torquay, Australia, win the Challenger by an average set score of 21 to 12. What? And then they won the Elite 16 without dropping a set. Was there any teams at the Elite 16? Maria Faye, 
Artacho and Taliqua played. And did they beat them head to head? Didn't play them. So Betsy and Julia actually beat Maria Faye and Taliqua. Oh, wow. Um, I don't know. They're going to be good. I think they Betsy could be. Betsy and Julia? No. Or, I, I think they'll be Kelly good as well. Kelly and Sarah just seem like the right. They got their mojo back. Yeah. They, they know. They have experience now. They're kind of veterans now. Uh, Sarah has enough of like fire based on like a lot. how the last uh, quad went for her. She's with Mikkel. I saw her today actually. Nice. She's still working out hard. Always. Um, she's a beast. Dude. Yeah, I mean, sh- right now would be the time to take time off, and she's not. So that says a lot right there. Um. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy that it's looking like April's not going to be a part of it. Yeah, Kleinman, I, I haven't talked to either of them. Yeah, this is not official, but but my vi- <laughs> my vibe, if I had to guess, I'd say yeah, April is going to take, I would guess she takes another, eh, I think she'll get the bug and, and want to play AVP next year. Okay. And she'll play AVP for a few years. That's, yeah. That would be my guess. This is not coming from her, by the way. Yeah. Kleinman, I don't know, because they were out practicing. Yeah. These girls are practicing. Yeah, USA. But just getting reps, I think. I don't know. Might just be staying in shape. It's funny because, like, Delaney, <laughs> she'll get out and pepper. It's like beach volleyball is just great exercise. <laughs> Delaney just looks at it as exercise now. <laughs> so maybe that's how April and Alex are looking at it. Yeah, or just in, in, until they make their official decision, don't go too far down the slide of, yeah. like, where it's too hard to get back. Yeah. Especially at, like, April's, like, 38. Might be, uh, but she might. Is she forty? Maybe she's close. Thirty nine. Yeah, maybe? somewhere between that thirty eight and forty range. So that's tough for anyone, male or fem- more so female. I feel like yeah, at that age to yeah. really like get your keep your body where it needs to be. Um, so yeah, yeah. Well, so I don't know. I mean, the women. Sponsor. Well, I think yeah, Sponsor and Therese seem pretty locked in. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that I think Kelly and Sarah. Chang and Hughes, that is. They're so confusing because there was a Kelly Kalinske and a Sarah Hughes. Now it's Kelly Chang and Sarah Hughes. Chang and Hughes. Um, oh, that's actually... Who's Kalinske with? That's, a, that's the floater for the women, I guess. She's not dialed in yet? No, I don't think so. She's just getting back from knee surgery. Um, oh, right, yeah. And then, so she's a floater. She works hard. I think she'll be fine yeah. after knee surgery. Zana's a floater. Zana Kalinske, maybe? I, I think I would like that team. Huh. That'd, be, that'd be a good defensive team. Yeah, I feel like Zana likes a big, behind a big solid block with with how athletic she is. Yeah, that could be good for her. Yeah, so I think uh, I'd put Kelly Chang and Sarah Hughes as a top three team in the world. Um, and maybe I'm caught up in the reunion hype, but I'd put like reunion hype and uh, the and just crushing. Well, and the worst tournaments fields. of the year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but it's, they it's haven't. Like, play, they probably haven't played a top fifteen team in the world yet. Probably not. Honestly. Which I, I don't want to downplay them because I, I am on yeah I am on the train, but it's hard to say when you yeah. ha- when you haven't really competed against the best yet. Yeah, I mean I'm just I'm leading the I'm like conducting the hype train. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean Lotman's our guy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean I, I don't think there's any real major partnership shifts aside from yeah, that no, one. Not we'll too wait. much juice for you guys right yeah. now. Sorry. Sorry about that. Although Joe Meserve. Uh, did ask if Carrie's making an Olympic run, if so, possible partners. And Carrie's been getting after it with yeah. Logan Tom. Really? Yeah. They've been uh, on it's 8th Street with uh, Arthur Carvalho. And so Arthur. I don't know what – I mean, Logan obviously has no points. I don't know if Carrie would have been able to freeze whatever points she had. Are we had talking if, international? Because she can play AVP now if she just – Maybe. I mean, it's, who's, it's still oh. the same AVP guys except for Donald. What, Al? Yeah, Al's just gonna be salty still. Maybe I, I don't know. I don't, but I think Bally's probably makes the call there, and they're like, I think oh, it, so you have a little scuffle with her, and you don't want you yeah. don't want the goat of beach volleyball to play. No, yeah. she's gonna go ahead and play. I think it would be very wise of <laughs> Bally's to let Carrie back exactly. if she wants to. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's probably more in Carrie's uh, box. Yeah. Internationally, though, with I mean, with this system. 
play three events, boom, you're back. And you know she could get a wild card. Oh, she could get wild cards. <laughs> and then Logan Tom, I mean, I have no idea. I know she used to play. She dabbled a bit, and she's like one of the greatest indoor players we've ever had. Yeah. So I really can't speak on how well they would do. And you're foolish to ever doubt Carrie Walsh Jennings uh, no. in beach volleyball. But my initial thought is, eh, it's not going to happen. Yeah. It, um, if, if they do go for it, it'll be fun to follow. Right. It's, for sure. That's, <laughs> we'll talk about it. From an entertainment standpoint, yeah. I will enjoy following it. Yeah. Why not? I mean, Carrie was so close. She had the spot. Yes. Last Olympics. We all forget that. She had the spot and Sponsel and Clay's charged, stole it. Yeah. Like went nuts to take it. They had to do something completely unprecedented. Yeah. To win that. And they did. Yeah. Twice. I don't think they'd ever, they'd never won. Yeah. And they'd never, I don't know the last time they podiumed prior to Sochi and Ostrava and then they won back to back. And then broke up. <laughs> and then broke up. Yeah. <laughs> But crazy, crazy. It's beach volleyball. Yeah. Uh, moving on to our next hot topic, uh, the AVP season ending awards and just other AVP questions. So a bunch of people want to know who our picks would have been for like MVP <laughs> offensive player. Mine already in their volleyball magazine, <laughs> <laughs> the volleyball mag committee, uh, the whole me. Thing. With uh, a very light edit of Lee Fine's vlog. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, first of all, this whole ballot thing. I think a lot of people are getting confused. Like AVP put out, uh, or sorry, Bally's put out a ballot because they wanted to see what the fans' choices yeah. were, right? And the, and it seemed really weird because there was players like Phil who should be on it yeah. that wasn't on it and other players who probably aren't going to get any votes yeah. that were that wasn't the actual voting for the awards. The AVP sent out a voting about a month ago to the players that doesn't count Phoenix with, with some statistics attached. That not supposed to count Phoenix, obviously didn't count Central Florida. So now all the fans are looking at it like, what? Phil won three events with yeah. three different guys. So he had only won two when the voting was done. I don't really know why they did it before the season was over. Yeah. But they did. <clears throat> um, so just know that the Bally's bet ballot situation that everyone's freaking out about on social is yeah. not where the actual voting for the awards came. The award voting has come from the players. I wonder and, if they'll do two. Like I, right <clears throat> now they're releasing the player votes on Instagram. <clears throat> I wonder if they'll do sort of the fan. Yeah. Votes. I mean, the player votes are, are the official awards. I think that one of them's got to be the official. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like, you would think. And that's the one that and, hey, that's listen, what matters. I got some bonuses tied in. So if we want to do <laughs> three, I already, do I get bonuses for the volleyball mag voting? Heck yeah, you do. If so, then I'm going to talk to you ev- before, to every, uh, before every end of the season. Hey, bro, I'll give you a little cut 10%, here. Give me a, <laughs> 10%. <laughs> I know I'm close here. Maybe I'm second, but give me a little bump in and, and I'll give you 10%. No, uh. Um, yeah. Um, I think, uh, I just want to know who put the ballot together for the Bally's thing. I think someone at Bally's did it. That's <laughs> like, why they didn't watch the, the season. <laughs> like Phil's not on the MVP list. Paul Lotman's on the MVP thing, which is fine, but he wasn't the MVP of his own team. Right. Like Miles. <laughs> well, your MVP of the whole season is Miles Partain. <laughs> he wasn't on the list. And best, like, Phil wasn't on any of it. And that's actually one of the questions from, um... Before Zod was wondering, like, no nominations for Phil. Like, it seems like a slap in the face. I'm wondering if Bally's or whoever put the ballot together was, like, trying to give Phil a little ding for playing with Sutton. Maybe. Because I did consider that for the Volvo well, Mag ones. Okay, well, let's let's talk. Uh, we're talking about MVP here. Any Phil wasn't on any of them. Oh, really? He oh, was God. on none of the Bally's. Yeah, well, that's just silly. Play. <laughs> it's insane because hitting percentage he was probably he's always at the top so or like near the top for athletes who played every like every pretty much every main draw event mm-hmm. Chase Budinger was number one in hitting percentage was mm-hmm. not on the list for best offensive player yeah right so th- so this it's, it's ridiculous the ballast thing is just not <laughs> just not legit <laughs> yeah. I was looking at it I was like what is going on yeah the statistics is are 
because I looked at the, what AVP sent us, and then I compared it to what BV, was on BVB, and they yeah. were different. Really? So I was trying to vote MVP based off of two different statistics. I was like, wait, Where did what? BVB get the stats of... I would think that I don't BVB know. would have pulled it straight Well, from maybe they grabbed them yeah. earlier. Oh, no. You know what probably happened? I'm just realizing. Maybe the AVP didn't include Phoenix in it, and BVB did. Okay. Because they already knew yeah, that, that Phoenix shouldn't be a part of it because all the players didn't play in it. <laughs> right. Okay. So there we go. Mystery solved, maybe. I hope. <laughs> I hope there's li- logic to it. Um, but MVP, that's something where it's tough because you really have to f- have a clear definition of what an MVP is. Yeah. Like they should have given a – everyone's just going to give their own version of it. Like you yeah. have a, a very different version than other people. And, right whatever so it's like nba who's the mvp like is lebron really only a three-time mvp he went to the finals nine times in a row like clearly he's the most valuable right player over that span you know yeah he went like 10 years in a row or something to the finals it's insane it's crazy but his it, they end up giving it to the guy who has the most points on the season unless they have like a crazy like 30 10 and yeah. 6 or something, then they'll give it to that guy over the guy who averaged 31. But for the most part, they, it's for the fans and the the best scorers, usually, generally the MVP, right? Yeah. Not really the most valuable player who makes all his teammates better, yeah. makes a championship-worthy team. So that's kind of a tricky thing with voting as well, Yeah, I think. Yeah, so who, if you were voting, mm-hmm. who's your, we'll just do I MVP... <laughs> I can't player. be part of voting when I'm on the list. But would you consider yourself the MVP? Um, well, I think I think I would because we won the most. Yeah. Um, and then obviously you can give it to me or Trev. Yeah. Um, and we won significantly more in the biggest events. Yeah, you did. So it's hard to justify that and then you can look okay well is there someone else that's sick like just they're the reason that their team is winning period and i don't think there's anyone clearly that person um or who have that good of a year phil is is a weird situation because he won three smaller events or two without the vote whatever if we're not going to count florida and he did it with two partners. I wasn't in New Orleans, so it's hard for me to vote for that one. Yeah. Who else wasn't in New Orleans? Theo uh, and Kim. He played... So the top two teams weren't there. He played Lottie and Miles. He played the Taylors in the finals. Yeah. Um, so that was Sanders' first final. Andy and Luciana were there, but they... I think it was and, just me and Andy Theo. Andy was really sick, so they, they took like ninth. Seventh, yeah, and maybe. then me and Theo and... Um, were you I mean, guys in... Uh, yeah, we were somewhere. Were I think Your maybe Mala? Ostrava or something. Okay. Something like that. So, I mean, the, the event was a little watered down. Yeah. If it's only two. And then you look at the Andy event, it was like, eh, it's kind of a honeymoon thing. Yeah. You know? Didn't have a target on their backs really ever. He's kind of playing with yeah. house money the whole year. So just energy and vibe-wise, it's like, eh, that's yeah. boring. Give him the MVP for that. Um. Partain, you voted for Partain. I thought that was interesting because obviously they got one win. But then if if if, Part, <clears throat> if Partain's the MVP, then that means he must be with a partner that he's significantly carrying. Like that's basically the statement. Yeah. But then if Lotman's also at the same time the most underrated player on tour. Yeah. The MVP is with the most underrated player. And they still only won one event. Then it's like, eh, I don't know. Yeah. Plus, uh, Partain was getting served a lot. He sat it out well, but it wasn't like ridiculously high on the. I think he hit like usually when you're forty-two. I mean, it's great on there. But how high was he on the hitting percentage of the year list? He was in the top. It was actually funny. Him and Taylor Crab were tied to the hundredth right of a decimal point. But also, when you're playing that on two game, your hitting percentage goes way up. Like I, I got my MVPs, say, I got my offensive player of the years optioning. You see me, my hitting percentage yeah. with Hayden, I think I was second behind. I think Phil had, but narrowly got yeah. me. 
Like you're when you're optioning like that, yeah. you're getting a lot more. Your hitting percentage goes way up. That's interesting because I was looking at it. I didn't look at it that way. I looked at it from a like I thought from where Miles was optioning. Um, I think his game was impressing people, and that's why. Yeah, you know, literally, I, if I jump set one ball in the air, I hear fans go, "Oh!" Yeah. I was like, "That wasn't even cool." Yeah, but like they just want to see a jump set. Yeah, and how many people this year are yelling at me like? Do a jump set. <laughs> sky ball. Or same thing. Do a sky ball. Yeah. You know, when I subbed in for the Swedes, like the fans are like yelling, jump set, jump yeah. set. I was like, okay, but like it's the same thing as just setting it. Yeah. If I, um, so I think it's entertaining and it catches your eyes. Like, oh my God, that's so impressive. Yeah. Um, but when we played against Partain, it wasn't like, oh, we got a problem here. Yeah. It wasn't like blocking against Phil. Yeah. Um, and then I also thought his passing kind of like setting up Lotman to do what he does, but Lotman's not capable of that. He's not a jump setter. He doesn't have the beach right. hands necessarily. Kind of like messed their system up. And yeah. that's why we got the best of them the whole season until Phoenix. So I don't know. I don't know if I'd give it to him. Yeah. So your pick, because I narrowed it down to you, Miles, and Trev yeah. for MVP. And then it's just between me and Trev. And I'll, I'll let everyone else vote on that one. Got it. <laughs> and then for de- defensive, I thought it was like pretty clearly between that's tricky. Miles and Bug. His Bugs. Yeah, Taylor Cameron crowd. was pretty high up there on the list. Uh, Diggs, what? Right? I think he was. I want to say. I could be so wrong. So I looked at it. I can't look at it at, in terms of volume because came because they did so well. Yeah, he, he's just gonna have play more. Matches it's more and digs sets. per set. It's digs per set, which, which I would look at. And Miles and. Taylor Crab were always the highest. Yeah, I, I, I'd agree. Those two. It's hard for me to not give it to Taylor. Like when I just look at pure defender. Yeah. And I'm ripping a ball at someone like Miles isn't someone I'm like, dude. He might like just put his arm out and just scoop me. Yeah. Or like off the belly or like <laughs> yeah. something weird and just make it look super easy. Like that's Taylor Crab. Like he does stuff like that. Yeah. And um chasing balls down like he's also playing against a rookie blocker obviously it's one of the most athletic volleyball players to ever play but yeah but his block was all over the place to start the season sander so i just i, I just give it to taylor because i think yeah. he's the best defender we have yeah it was that gave me a lot of problems was picking between miles and bug mm-hmm. and i ended up just did a digs per set it was like whoever just had the taylor's most. a better defender right now but it's also Partain like got better throughout the year. Yeah. So it's like easy to like look at him at the end of the year and be like, oh my god, he won an event and then he beat Try and Trev in Phoenix and what looked like an unstoppable machine. Yeah. Which like you know, he he looked really good in Phoenix and I think he is getting better and he went international. So he just got progressively better throughout yeah. the year. Um, but pure defender, I just don't think it's there yet to yeah. like really give him that. Like yeah. Throughout the whole season, were you the best defender yeah. in America? Not yet. Yeah. And I had uh, and I had trouble with the women for best defender because I feel like the U.S. is like seven of the top twenty defenders in the world. And you Seriously. Got Sponsel, you got Sarah Hughes, Kristen Nuss, Zana, Betsy, mm-hmm. uh, Stockman is pretty dang good. Zana averaged more than seven digs per set. What? The highest for the guys in a single tournament was Miles Partain at four point five. And do you? That's for the year. <laughs> do we? When we're talking about, let's say there's a defender who digs ten balls per set. Yeah. But we know can't set out very yeah. well. Is that still the best defender on tour? Yeah. So that's what I ended up giving it to Sponsel mm. instead of Zana because Sponsel was way more terminal, mm. both inside out and transition. Yeah. Um, but just the sheer volume of digs. Was nice because yeah, you look defense. at game. Like when we say defender, we're talking about the player, right? As a, like the it's, defender, it's a holistic yeah. thing. It's not just it's not who's going to dig balls, digging. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, because that because I, I had a tough time. I was like, well, because at first I was like, Sarah Hughes was amazing. Well, so you put let, 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 let put <laughs> Phil in his prime on defense, yeah. and he's not digging as many balls. But who's the best defender on tour? Ninety percent side out. <laughs> it's this guy, yeah. yeah, he doesn't have to dig it. Yeah, he's, he's the best out of the defenders. Yeah, 
And that's why Evan Corey, he always makes a comparison between like him and Eric Baranek, uh-huh. where he's like, Baranek's going to make five, six, seven more digs but per set than away. I am per match, but I'll put him away at a, like a 20% higher clip <laughs> in transitions. He's like, I don't have to get that many digs. <laughs> that's the yeah. way he looks at yeah, it. Yeah, totally. So I picked Sponsel for my I didn't vote because it said player. not to vote. <sighs> okay. But but it also made us vote. So I put N A N A. It was so weird. It said don't it said only vote for your gender and then it made you go through the girls to be able to submit the yeah. thing. So I know a bunch of guys voted. Yeah. But I was just like N A N A N A. Because yeah. I haven't watched enough either. I don't yeah. I don't think I should be voting. You yeah. you watched. Yeah, I watched enough. Okay. Um so we'll leave you out of the, the yeah. women's for now. So for the men, we got your defensive player was Bug. MVP was you or Trev. Leave yeah. it up to the crowd. Um, we'll just do offensive player and leave it. Because rookie of the year was Sander. It's not even a discussion. Yeah, for sure. And I guess I, I'll give him serves too. But I, I want to see the eights to error ratio because yeah. he probably led the league in errors as well. Yeah. Um, also blocking, which I'd easily give to Theo. But it also pisses me off because I'm split blocking. At least get, show the stats. I did. I wish we could see the stats of blocks per attempt. I bet you I'd what win. I did. I don't know if that's true, but I bet I you I'd win. What I did for you guys, because it was funny, because a lot of listeners, uh, not listeners, readers, gave me crap for not having Logan Weber in there, but I had you in my best blockers. Well, did you watch Florida? And <laughs> <laughs> just, to, just in case you uh, <laughs> forgot. Um, because I looked at you and I was like, you had one of the highest blocks per set, and you only played half a set right. as a blocker. Mm. And so I basically doubled your number. Appreciate that. I did it like 1.75 because you do block way more in trans, and when it's tight, you're running. Right. Um, True. But Theo, I was kind of an easy pick. Yeah, it was whoever got my honorable mentions was... Yeah, just for fun. Yeah. No, I think Theo was, was the best blocker. And, and when you play against him this year, he's the one that... You have to change your attacking style the most against, yeah. which is a sign of a good blocker. Yeah. And then you, you can factor that in, I guess, to Kim's defensive player that you're voting. Yeah. Like, well, you had the best block, the biggest and best block in front of you. Yeah. Granted, Phil's block is usually. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty good. And it's pretty damn good, too. Yeah. And that's what, for Kim, I would put him, like, I split defenders in two categories. You have a Zana, like a volume defender. Mm hmm. And then you have a came, which is a terminal defender. I think you got to look at the stats and then just step back, forget the stats, and be like, who's the best at it? Like, who genuinely, as, especially because the players are voting. You played against this person. Yeah. Which one are you more scared of? Yeah. Which one changes your game? It's like, and then it becomes clear. Like, yeah, Theo. Yeah. Blocking. Taylor defending. Yeah. Yeah, Theo is, uh, I think, I've never played against Phil in a real match. I've always wanted to. We've Very different against styles. Him a couple times. He's just a presser. Yeah. Like the guy just takes your space away. And he's he's a lineup master. And he just goes over into your space in ways that you're just like, whoa, I didn't think you could be in my space that like that. Yeah. So he changes your whole game. Yeah. But Theo, every time I practice against him, I'm like, this is a problem. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. When Theo's feeling it. Because he, he has <laughs> yeah. such a quick load. He can like basically tap block, and that's like his max. Yeah. Whereas I'm like ass to the floor. Yeah. 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 You're, God, you and Hayden, man, your defense was a nightmare. Cause <laughs> like it? you play so, you play so different than any team I've ever played against. Like most teams, a defender will almost tell you everything they're gonna do the second you pass the ball and you look at where they're standing. Uh, but Hayden just sits in the seam. Yeah. The whole time. And pops and like, out. When's he, He's, why are you still there? And, <laughs> yeah. and you're just like so neutral because you, you're so athletic that you can make those big moves. And you get so low that I can't see you. Right. That's what people say. And I use like the blocker for my vision. Yeah. So Hayden's just sitting in the seam. I have no idea where he's going and I can't feel you. So I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's he's the idea. my highlight. <laughs> that's the idea. <laughs> so if you and Trev want to take notes, that was a... A tough defensive thing for me to figure out. <laughs> you talk to my partner, please. You talk to my partner. <laughs> um, so Kelly Reeves actually asked another good one. What teams or players impressed you the most this season? Did anyone 
impress you. This could be um, uh, world tour or AVP. You can take it however you want. Julia was like, wow, she just stepped to the top tier yeah. this season. I thought that was pretty impressive. <clears throat> Partain was like, everyone, I, I, I don't, I'm not a hype guy. I don't buy in the hype. Like, oh, this 16 year old is doing all this crazy stuff. I'm like, okay, yeah. well, when he does it, I'll believe it. And I, I knew he was really good last year. I saw it, but then this year he kind of confirmed it. I was like, okay, this guy's gonna be, yeah. gonna, he's gonna be a top guy. He's gonna be a problem. Um, so I, I mean, that, I thought that was really impressive. Um, Evan Corey, yeah. I mean, attacking wise, yeah. he he is really confident, and um, if he has a good beat on your defense, uh, yeah, he can side out all day. Um, he still has more to prove, but I think he's at least proven that like he he's worthy of jumping on the world tour and being a top a full time main draw player and like now I think now is the year to like for him to be like prove how high he's gonna get up this ladder. Not that it needs to happen next year. Yeah. But um he's proven that he, he's on that path, I think. Yeah. Um who else is there? Rafu. He never practices or does trains at all, and he's just so good. a good beach volleyball player. <laughs> yes, <laughs> he's like uh, he's like chubby Taylor Crab. <laughs> like if Taylor Crab couldn't move as well, but still just knows where to be and yeah. like can put his hands in the right spot and just has an amazing feel for the game. <laughs> yeah, I freaking love Rafu too, dude. Seriously, if if I could, if I could get Rafu, I really believe this. If I could get him full time training again, yeah. Let's say I could just give him with hundred thousand dollars, full time train, get him in peak shape, partner with him. Like I could go, we could go do damage. I think. Like, so. I think he's he's that good of a. He was great for Puerto Rico. He, he could never have a partner. Yeah. Nobody ever. It was like pulling indoor guys out and like want to learn how to play beach for a minute. Yeah. But he's the only one that knew how to play. So now he's like obviously part time, but he's still like. Just such a good volleyball player. His touch on the ball, I mean, he's like Adrian, kind of. Yeah, he's kind of like an Adrian ish. So like, but Adrian that's, does that's commit full time. 15 years. Yeah. Well, Adrian, who decided not to commit. Yeah. Or not that Rafu decided not to. He, he couldn't. Right. You know, he had to go get a job. He's got some kids. Work and... for his family. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I think it's a fairly similar comparison. I don't think Rafu would play that, like, running around style yeah like run away from the block style Which but just like the ball control yeah like the wrist the hand contact mm-hmm. like rafu i've never seen him miss hit a ball yeah ever right <laughs> or he'll miss hit it but he did it on purpose right, exactly he'll hit like f- the outer 10 percent of the ball and just like yeah do some crazy cutty or cuff yeah. serve or something just nuts yeah yeah i think who else uh, and I think Andy is probably the one that impressed me the most for the guys. Yeah, I think he took a step. No, yeah, that's a good call. He definitely took a step up and like proved that he's going to be a top blocker. Yeah. I kind of always... kind of felt like I figured that out the year before. Maybe that's why I didn't mention it. But I agree. Andy's going to be a top. He's one of our top. Let's just say top three guys. I think. Like, yeah. You can just put him in that. Right. Top three. Yeah, I I put him in there. Top three blockers anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's what I meant. And then for the girls, there. I mean, there's so many impressive women. Like our yeah, women are I know that's good. tough. My brain went pretty deep down that list. Gosh, I mean, you look at all the new winners. I mean, it took till Chicago. Yeah, who are our for new us winners? to have a repeat winner? Because it was Kristen and Taryn, and then it was Kelly and Betsy in New Orleans. I'm I'm gonna mess up the order of the tournaments, but it took till Chicago to get a repeat winner. I mean, Tina and Julia were new winners, or Tina and Haley were new winners. Gina and Julia were new winners, um, and then I mean, you just had Carly Khan and Chan Ketty. Oh, Carly Khan! Carly Khan! I like that one. Yeah, I think I'm I think so Carly. proud, dude. Because my whole life, there was one lady, Leah Hunt, who was on who we grew up with around Outrigger where where it was like, oh, she used to be on tour. Like, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Other than that, it was all men, always. Really? We've never had any women do well in tournament. Like, this is crazy because it's a huge sport in Hawaii. Yeah. It's a smaller male sport. 
Yet, for some reason, and I think it just comes down to boys being at Outrigger and just yeah. going up there and just playing just and competing, being, being so yeah. competitive. Like, the girls just didn't hang out on the courts with us that much. They came yeah. up, and it was, like, fun for us little boys. Like, oh, nice, the girls are here. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. But they weren't, like, competing like we were all the yeah. time, you know? Um, so I've always been like, damn, like, when are we going to get a Hawaiian girl out here? And she came up, and and I always heard, like, how good she was. But I was like, yeah, but come on. Like, she's not going to, like necessarily make it on the beach like she's i think she was maybe outside but also libero at missouri or something she so she came in she was recruited as a libero at right. zoo and then because she's smaller but she's pound for pound and, one of the best and then they let players. her start hitting and yeah. she left as the all-time kills leader oh really is that yeah. what it was yeah right okay <laughs> so that's badass as hell <laughs> so i but yeah i started hearing her name more and more and then it was like and then I started hearing from other girls, like, no, she's, like, legit. Like, she can block. And she's yeah. <laughs> undersized. And then, yeah, finally broke through this year. And she's still training out of Hawaii. Like, yeah. not a cow. It's, she's the only player, basically. There's one other girl over there. Caitlin Mullaney. Which is why she, it was her partner. Yeah. Um, and so now we have a, I mean, that was a pro series event. So we have an AVP champion as a female, that's yeah. pretty damn cool. Um, and I want to see her commit full yeah. time, like go for it, which means she might have to move up. Yeah. Trying to get her on the podcast soon. Yeah, I'm going back home, so maybe I can get her on the podcast back in Hawaii. Yeah, because she's just like a delightful person. Oh, yeah, for sure. Her dad actually did has done I, – I knew of her dad, like her dad's name before I knew of her. Yeah. Because he do, does all the – I want to say knee. He's a knee surgeon. Okay. Um, so he's done like all that big athletes. Okay. Knees or shoulders or something like that over the years. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. She's she's good. She's uh. I named my underrated player of the year. It's the Carly Khan Award. Oh yeah, that's that's a <laughs> runaway. I yeah. think for sure. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Um. So we have, man, there's so many good questions. Um, this will be, we'll make this one a, a quick hitter for you. So from Nathan Ritchie Slager, who do you think will get their first AVP win next year? Or if not next year, like who do you think is the next player to get their first? To get their first. Okay, so Partain and Ben already won, Lotman won. Uh, who hasn't won? My pick is would be Troy. Oh, Troy, yeah. Troy, Troy's kind of like he can get one at any time. Yeah, because he's, he's made a, a handful of finals now. Has he? Yeah. I think he's made three or four. Yeah, and, and like two years ago, three years ago. Well, he made Austin finals this year. Didn't No, but didn't he make... Um, he made New York with Tim Baumgren. Yeah, New York. That was like years ago. Yeah. Like three years like ago. Like 19 maybe. So you got to pick Troy because he's been touching finals for yeah. a few years now. But Troy, Miles Evans... Miles Evans, yeah. Is on that list? Yeah, he's on the list. Uh, who else? Is, is um, Evan Corey and Logan Weber a team next year? Yeah. They're, that's a that's a good pick. I mean, that's the kind of team where they just, if they get hot and, yeah. you know, get on a little streak. Yeah. They'll, they'll, you know, they, they'll win their early round matches here and there. And then if they just get on a hot streak, win three in a row or something. They could yeah. win it. I think if uh, I would, if player I'm wise, I would say Troy. Troy. Yeah. yeah, player wise, I would say Troy because he's just kind of a veteran and he's been there. Yeah. But that's the thing about finals. Usually, you have to be there a few times before yeah. you can actually win it. Yeah, a lot of players have been like took Trevor eight. Trevor did eight. <laughs> Troy probably has like three or four. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I don't know how many it took me. Maybe like three or four. I think. Okay. Mm, yeah, maybe my third. And the the good thing about Evan and Logan is that they have a lot of experience winning tournaments. Right. They don't That's have experience bit. winning an AVP, but they won so many of those big AVP next gold. Yeah, so they're just kind of used to like, series. okay, we're at the end of the tournament. This is a final. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's valuable. Yeah. I'd pick Troy, but I think Evan and Logan are probably close second. Team-wise. And then, yeah, for the women, who hasn't won? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, maybe Savvy. Sav, let's go. Let's go, Sav. No, uh, Brandy. 
Brandy's never won an oh, MVP. Oh, Brandy's never won one. And Mel? Mel's won. She's won a handful with Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, with yeah, Pavin. Pavin, that's um, right. But I don't know how much they're going to play AVP. Right. Um, so I think Zana and Brandy are two of the best players who have yet to win. Mm-hmm. So Zana, Brandy, and Sav, depending on partners. Mel, maybe she's playing with Tony. Let's see how Tony yeah. recovers. Yeah, Tony's supposed to be lethal when she's healthy. But, like, say Sav gets picked up, or say uh, Zana gets picked up by, like, a Kalinsky. Ooh, see. yeah. And that's not an official thing. It's a hypothetical. Right. Um, that could be a win. I'd pick, so, I'd pick Brandy. He's got to be pro, at least pro level, by the way. It has to be a pro level, yeah. Should there be asterisks on, like, uh, remember the San Francisco Open? <laughs> <laughs> So, but then no, you can't. Y- There's yeah, no asterisk. You can't do asterisk there. Everyone, I will give everyone who played the tour series credit. Not a single person who won a tour series claims claims an AVP win. Right, right, right. Yeah. No one. Mm. Which is, and Tim Baumgren was even laughing about it because he won Virginia, and he was like, "It sucks because it's on BVB as an AVP win." Oh yeah. But it's he was like, "It's not right, right, right. It's not a win." Yeah, 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 yeah. I know that's true. When I look at my BVB, there's like all these legit wins, and then like Norseka, thousand dollars. Right. It's like, ah, take that shit off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm picking, picking Brandy. I think Brandy's the best player not to have won. Yeah, for sure. I mean, women. clearly she was in Brandy, the world championships. After Brandy, I'm going Zana. Love it. I'm going Savvy. Okay. Keeping it in house. Let's go, Sav. That'd be a fun podcast. After Savvy wins, that'd be a really fun <laughs> yeah, podcast. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. We'll pop some champagne for that one. Um, this, is actually a, this is actually a really fun one. Chad BS, three stops to keep, three stops to drop from the 2022 AVP season. Ooh, love that. Yeah. Okay. Look, we're taking Manhattan. You, Wait, you there cannot, was more than six geez. events, though. But that's what he's saying. Like, you're... You're dropping three. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. Like you're, you're, le- you're three least favorite, and you're keeping your three favorite. Okay, gotcha. Manhattan what? You can't pick Manhattan. That's an obvious. Okay. I'll keep um, Chicago, clearly. Phoenix. Okay. It doesn't have to be an eight-teamer. I just think that was a really cool. Yeah. Not that I think a third of our events for the year should be. Yeah. Well, no, they'll, they'll still be a full. Yeah. I thought Phoenix was really cool. It was a unique experience for fans, and I think they enjoyed it. Um, and then it's either Atlanta or Atlanta's dope. It just the weather didn't wasn't good, and yeah. then it's sometimes it, the first year was too hot for the fans to sit in the stands, and then the second year it rained out. But I'm gonna stay Atlanta because the night matches are so dope. Yeah, which. We ruined. We had one good match against Taylor and Taylor for like ninth place, um, and the fa- you can tell that there's good fan base. Mm-hmm. Like they love being there. It's just when the weather cooperates. So yeah. I'm gonna keep Atlanta. Okay, and then uh, so those are your three to keep. So I'll do my three to keep, and then we'll do our three to drop. I'm keeping Denver. Um, nice. I liked Denver a lot. Keeping Huntington. I love Huntington. Oh, Beach. Huntington's great. I love Huntington. Um. And, God, I mean, I don't even know. Does Hermosa, is that, like, the same as Manhattan? Oh, Hermosa, yeah. Can you? I mean, of course we want to be in Hermosa. Yeah, I'm keeping her. Those are my three. <laughs> keeping Hermosa. Um, and, obviously, Manhattan is a unanimous keep. Yeah. Um, three to drop. And, and I just love Hermosa and Huntington, by the way. Yeah. All those. We just need all of them. Southern California, God, they're the best. There needs to be just a Cali Cup. We need a big sponsor to come in with $100,000 and create a Cali Cup. And those events are just the Cali Cup. And the, yeah. Winner gets all of it. Winner take off? Love, <laughs> Love that. <laughs> Three to drop. Three to drop. Um, Austin. Not. I, I love the fan base in Austin, but the venues just yeah. felt, felt weak. Um, Central Florida, it just, it just felt too amateur of an event. Do you think that, uh, that had anything to do with the time? It's December. I mean, yeah, a little bit. You mean like fan base wise? Yeah. It's like, say you have that same but tournament even, in May. Okay. Let's look at the final. Like we had, uh, that was the match everyone wanted to see. And 
there basically wasn't any more room for people. Like they could have done like the old school where they're like yeah. standing far away and like tiptoeing over people, but yeah. And it just still felt like a. It felt like that's what the tour series should feel like. Yeah. Right. Um, and as a tour series player, that it that's what the tour that's series. That's what it felt is. Like. Right. Yes. Okay. So yeah. perfect. Like yeah. that. That would be an awesome series. The qualifying series. <laughs> <laughs> Where those are the events, and everyone's yeah, yeah, sure, everyone's playing for something really important, like to go be on the top tour. Yeah, to anyway, go to Hermosa. Anyway, we don't need to go back there. <laughs> uh, well, Hermosa was a challenge, a qualifying series, a tour series. Wait. Sorry, Huntington. Sorry. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um. Yeah, Central Florida's felt a little too amateur. Okay, so Austin, Central I just Florida. want a good product for fans. Like, I want fans to feel like, whoa, I'm at this pro yeah. event, like this big professional, yeah. legit entertaining event, which our sport doesn't do a good job of in general. Yeah. But having, like, a f- four rows of stands and people just standing around is doesn't help. Um, I mean, Fort Lauderdale f- was the same vibe, mm-hmm. but if they... It's such a good beach. It's such a, like a staple beach volleyball beach. There. And the fans are there. They were just roasting their feet with no shade <laughs> yeah, and four rows of stands. So I want to keep Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. Austin, what else was there? Um, well, there's a lot of tour series. That might have been all the events you played. Yeah, that is. So um, I have to drop one of them? Because there was... I mean, there's okay, I got to oh. drop Fort Lauderdale then. If, if that's what we're going to do okay. is... Those small stands, that's basically you, what makes or breaks it for me. You missed New Orleans. Um, yeah, I would drop that too because I've missed it like five years in a row. <laughs> and every year everyone's like, oh, it's terrible. It flooded out every time. Yeah. Granted, what? everyone loves Coconut Beach for all you New Orleans. I really do want to go there. Is it called Coconut Beach? Yeah. I do want to go there. And everyone seems to say that's the coolest place ever. But you guys weather yeah. doesn't cooperate. And that's just... Uh, deciding factor and i think man i think if they do new orleans right they could crush it you like, gotta bring fans man if you if we need stands I mean. if we're gonna do a big event we need a stadium any tour series event sure that's perfect soccer bleachers soccer bleachers yeah we need i'd rather have four big events that feel like professional sports entertaining fans than seven or eight crappy ones yeah i think i actually i think that that model it's it's funny i think that the model that donald was going for building up eight good events is actually the way to go yeah but he didn't execute it's yeah but i think the idea is sound right oh Um, for sure yeah but I think, because, uh, man, New Orleans has so much potential. Because, like, I've been there. I've played so many events at Coconut. Uh. And there are fans there. Right. Like, people love volleyball. Well, should it? Look, you don't, like, need, you don't need sand courts or sand on the ground to run a volleyball event. Like, how many times have we built, sand, like, stadiums? Yeah. Maybe we bring it somewhere else. Well, I think. Or is that the place to well, be? I think Coconut's the place to be. Okay. Um. My vote would be to have every match at we night. go right on Bourbon Street. Every match, you, that'd be sick. <laughs> you, <laughs> you could. get some serious fans there. You could do it. You, uh, I would just have every match at night. Like no match starts before five p.m. Great. You run like um, some kind of tournament during the day, like a, For fans. a club tournament, uh, sixes, fours, whatever. Like New Orleans loves volleyball. Like mm. people show up. You just say like you get free entry if you play in the tournament. Come at night. Mm. They they have this. Awesome bar right there. Right. And you just run everything at night. Like the night matches were actually crowded, but the day ones, I was like, all right, I can count like one, two, three, six fans. Just run it at night. As a top <laughs> event, yeah, no. We just, that's just not, like we're, we're putting on an entertainment product. Like that's what your tour is supposed to be. That's what Leonard Armato saw it as. Everyone from the, refs to everyone was more like they used to have marvin dancing the ref like (laughs) everyone out there has the intention of entertaining fans like that's kind of what it was yeah geeter geeter i don't care what you do they used to tell him i don't care what you do just 
you can do anything. Nothing's off limits. Entertain the fans. Yeah. Go crazy. And that's what he did. Yeah. So, yeah. That's, we, all, we already know where my head's at. So, so those are your three to drop, yep. my three to drop. Atlantic City, we're never going back again. Um, <laughs> I'm all right with that. Those are my two worst finishes of my career until this year. Because <laughs> I, I think, I, what, I got a seventh and a ninth this year, I think. Did I get a ninth in Hermosa? Uh, no, I think you got Seventh? A... Okay, maybe two sevenths? You got a ninth in Atlanta. Oh, that was a ninth? Yeah. Okay. And then I think a seventh in Hermosa. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so... Before that, I had gotten this two sevenths in Atlantic City. Okay. So that was, like, the worst city ever. Yeah. So AC, uh, AC's out. AC was funny because all the players were collectively united in their misery. Adversity unites people. Oh, God. You know? And we were all united in that. Um, AC's just a bad town. It's funny. This uh, <laughs> this comedian, Sam Morrill, mm-hmm. he described Atlantic City as, like, people leaving Vegas is what people look like driving into Atlantic <laughs> City. <laughs> Just already <laughs> crushed like, and demoralized. Just, oh, God, I need to get out of here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> so AC's out. Um, I drop a packa. I would leave that as just a grassroots event. It's an awesome event. Shouldn't be an AVP. Um, it was a tour series? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it ran at the same time as Hermosa. Um, I would drop that. It's cool. The guys who run it do an excellent job, but it's just like, yeah. It's, it's a grassroots event. Um, and then I would probably drop Austin as well. Mm. I think that there's something in Texas. It's just the there's venue. A I've talked there, to but, I've talked to Glazebrook, yeah. and he's just like, this is just 10 times cheaper to put it here. Yeah. So like, when I get my budget, I look at where I can put it, and I, this is where I can put it in Austin. Yeah. And it makes sense. There's better venues. They, yeah. they, they're aware of them, and they <laughs> want to put them there, but... Uh, they just get charged too much. Yeah, that makes sense. So those are our three to drop and three to keep. Um, we're at an hour ten. Wow, really? I know. That was quick. And we, there's so many freaking questions. Well, we can blast through these ones. Though. Yeah. So here's a quick hitter from Victoria uh, Shex. Is it appropriate to go up to a pro after they lost their game and ask for an autograph? Yes. Um I don't know if every pro will get it. Like, some pros are just rookies. Um, But at the end of the day, we're kind of there for the fans. Like, we're there for you guys. So give us a second. (laughs) Like, if someone's steaming and, like, you think they're going to throw their bag on the ground and, like, give them a second for sure. Um, But, yeah, you can. Um, I don't think anyone's going to be rude or do anything. Definitely give them a second. Yeah. Um, but I think once they walk off the court and walk uh, outside of the the court area, um, it's free game. Yeah. Just be polite. Yeah. I think just use a little emotional intelligence. Just yeah, like, exactly. Does he look like he would kill me? No, but we are there for the, <laughs> for the fans. Like, yeah. I don't. We're not um, such big celebrities that, that we're like so tired of dealing with autographs. Like, yeah. We can it's like we oh can my handle. gosh, my third of the day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've so. signed like fifty autographs this year. Oh my god! And and in Too my many. mind, I think a lot of players are actually. Uh, it brings them back to being like, oh wow, like life isn't so bad. Yeah, totally. Because you feel like a jackass if you're yeah. like being mean and there's like someone that genuinely yeah. just wants your autograph. Yeah. Someone asked after uh, you and Hayden beat us for the second time in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, someone asked me like I was um, switching my flight to try to get out later that night and like i was in the middle of switching and a guy asked and i was like frustrated yeah i was like oh yeah it's like kind of a cool thing right yeah then i just like talked to him for 15 People minutes probably won't and... ask for my autograph for my whole life so i better <laughs> milk it now <laughs> yeah. so i think it's actually just give it a second wait till they've cooled off and and you'll get your autograph yeah. picture yeah it's fine um so this is something that I think we can do a better job. This is just sort of a note. So Lizzie's life, moving to the offseason and lifestyle, what jobs do P- do beach volleyball players have if they can't support themselves solely with volleyball? And we just asked Carly Scott that last week. Mm-hmm. And so we can just do a better job of asking players that because pretty right. much everyone has their own side hustle. Yeah, I, mean, I wouldn't say everyone. That's kind of the crazy thing about our sport is like there's so many different tiers of players within – the same group of players Mm -hmm. 
like you put all the American players into one group, and April Ross is in there. Yeah. But like she makes a very good living. Yeah. And she does not do any side jobs. She's never had to since day one. Um, and then you group that in with you know someone who has to bartend at night. Um, I haven't had a job ever, a side job. I I. I, w- I did some coach, you know, a little coaching here and there, make some money yeah. on the side, um, back in the day. But I'm also really cheap, so I, like I, I lived off of just a little bit. Yeah. And I went and made indoor money before I came to the beach, which wasn't that much. But, um, I personally, yeah, just was like, I'm, I'm not getting a job. I'm gonna try to do everything I can to not have to yeah. work and focus all my energy on volley- volleyball, so that I can get to the point where I don't need a job. And it works for me. It doesn't work for everyone. But just understand that there's not everyone actually does have other jobs. Like the top players really genuinely don't even coach or yeah. do anything on the side. Yeah. I think the most common side hustles are everyone coaches. Everyone does privates. Yeah, coaching is very easy. Waiting. like uh, Maybe like a, a late night bartending or something. Waiting, bartending. That's yeah. super common. I know Jess Gaffney, she's a waitress and uh, maybe bartender. I think Zana bartended for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um Delaney coached, obviously. A lot of people have remote jobs. I think Molly Turner does social media for people. Some people Gina get to does like work media. for the family company and kind of like dabble. So yeah. it's like, we're going to, you know, you're going to work for us, but you're also like, we understand that you're trying to focus on volleyball. Yeah. 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 So people do a little bit of everything. But when we have guests on who are not full time players, I think it will, we'll try to ask them right, right, what yeah. they do. Um, Common question is what does what's off season looking like this year, and for, that's from JoJo Pogi. JoJo and uh, Frank Field wants to know how do you schedule uh, lifting for the off season? Like, what does off season lifting look like? Um, well, it changes every year. I kind of learn more and more about myself and what I'm capable of. Or it's it's more mentally. Like when I was younger, it's like two months off, surf hang out with friends, do nothing. Yeah. And then it became one month. And then now, like, I didn't really even take much time off. And then obviously I played in that event. And then I'm back doing more rehab-like stuff. Um, So it's just all gym work right now. Um, There's definitely a break, um, but it's just simple, like, rehab, gym work, recovery um, until about the new year. And then we'll start ramping it up into like jump training, like plyometrics, cardio, um, power, power work. You want to build up a good power base um, before season starts. So that'll be mostly in January. Um, but I mean, yeah, it, it's just so different because our off seasons are different every year. Yeah. Like we've had three month off seasons and now we have a one month, well, kind of. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Not even one month off until I have to start playing again. Yeah, and that's dependent. I mean, have you guys, have you and Trev, like, are you going to play the Doha? I th- I don't know. We were looking at it. Because I was there's thinking There's no about reason it. not to because there's also three weeks off after it. So we could do a little ramp up and then yeah. cool off a little too. Uh, it's just a matter of how the body's feeling. Yeah. If we don't feel like we've um, nursed all our injuries and stuff, yeah. Enough. There's no point in like pushing it when we can like know that we're going into season hundred percent. So we're kind of playing it by ear like yeah. that, but but planning on it until okay. we decide not to. Gotcha. Because I was thinking about like because off season like a real one is so valuable. Yep. And if you if you shortchange that like Brower took like a week off, he's already back at it. I don't know how they do that. And uh, it's so valuable if you shortchange your off season like you you might just be playing at like 80% right? at the beginning of the year. By the end of the year, who knows <laughs> what no, you're playing at. No, I agree. And, we, and Trevor and I took um, the first event off this, this season, which pushed, I think it was two weeks off in between um, Tlaxcala and Rosarito. Yeah. So it pushed our training back three weeks. We got three weeks ex- yeah. extra rest, I think. And... Um, I mean, look at our results. We by the end of the year, we were playing really well, and yeah. other teams, some other teams, weren't you know falling off. And, and I thought you I guys mean, played very the, well in Rosarito. Yeah, we did play well for a first event of the year, and we had obviously good draw. 
I think a I tough, mean, tough, tough draw. I, I was thinking tough and I said good. <laughs> it's a good teams good. is what I meant. Good, <laughs> good teams is what I meant. Yeah. Um, but yeah, to each his own. And, and I question it this year. Every year I'm like, okay, well, what do I need to do differently? Um, but I don't think shortchanging the off season is necessarily a good idea. Like, screw it. I'm just going to go all in. And yeah. But then again, I think you do have to push your capacity. Like, how do you know you're not capable of just getting better all year long? Right. If you don't try, you know? So there's there's just a balance there. You got to test trial and error for yourself. Yeah. I think uh, for Frank's specific question, lifting lifting's different in the off season for me because it's a lot more... Um, heavier and slower mm. and it's more it's a lot of eccentric and isometric lifting yeah. and just building up just really strong muscles mm. and then as the season progresses you add a lot more supersets in with like you're lifting heavy but then you're going really light and explosive yeah and i wish i could give more specific like i i feel like almost like an expert because i've done it for so many years but when i'm in the gym with my trainer i'm like Asking like, dude, why are we doing this right now, and why not this and that? And he has an explanation for everything, and I'm just like, God, I don't know anything. Yeah, which makes me be like, I'm smart for just letting him deal with it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I really just don't like the, these trainers. Some people just understand the body and how it works at a way deeper level, and I just have one of those people on my team to yeah. to deal with it, and I yeah. trust them. We have, there's a couple world tour questions. We'll skip those for now. Let's see. So this one's from Lisa Dietrich. Interesting. Interesting question. What type of content is the beach volleyball world missing right now? Um, I almost don't think it's the content. That we're missing necessarily. We have like a little bit of everything. It's the quality. And I think it's the hype of the sport. Like how many people are just so excited to watch this specific team play? Like how many people have a team? Yeah. And are like fully bought in to like, I'm like the way that I follow the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah. Like people don't really follow a team like that. They, yeah. We have some diehard fans. I don't want to discredit you guys, but there's just not that many of you. And um, I think that's what we're missing. And obviously if we had a better quality content, like uh, like the Drives to Survive kind of thing where it kind yeah. of tells a deeper story and lets you know who these athletes are on a deeper level, which... Honestly, I think we do the best job of that. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, just high-quality content, I think, that really, like, you watch a documentary or docu-series and you're just, like, can relate to that athlete. Yeah. And um, feel for them or, you know, feel something. Like, yeah. that's what we need fans to do. and. I don't think there's much content out there that we're like, we're trying on our YouTube channel, trying different things here and there. And we, we agree that we could do a better job of it, but we're kind of trial and trial and error. And yeah, we're going to keep trying new stuff. Um, but yeah, AVPs is like, there's no content beyond just the volleyball, like live streaming it basically. And then leaving yeah. it up. I don't know. I don't really have a specific answer. I think better quality. I, I think the biggest content we're missing is good events. Right. Yeah. That, I think that's it. We have Manhattan, and that's and Hermosa. Why is Manhattan a good event? Because people care. I mean, that's exactly people care about Manhattan. There's something on the line. Yeah. Something big. Yeah. You, There's tradition. Fifteen grand, like that's a lot of money to a lot of people, but it's not a life-changing amount of money to anyone yeah and so it doesn't excite people whereas yeah. getting your name immortalized on the pier with hovland and those people yeah that's a big deal i want to see how those guys perform under pressure playing for that yeah and i think that's the 
and and AVP didn't even create that. Like that was the city of Manhattan Beach creating yeah. that value, and they're just riding that coattail and maybe not even realizing it. Yeah, and that uh, goes that goes for the world tour as well. I mean, you look oh, at for sure. world championships and look at that big empty coliseum, and you're like, damn, that's tough. Mm-hmm. I mean, even as like I will watch everything. Yeah, and watching like Dubai. With no people there? I didn't even watch. Watching the Maldives? I didn't watch our fellow Americans in the semifinals. Yeah. Like, granted, I'm also, like, cheering against them. Right. But, but like... You, you like Bug. I mean, you love Taylor. No, it wasn't you Taylor. Know. It was... um In where? Dubai? World Champs, I'm saying. Oh, World Champs. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's a big deal. The yeah. World Championships? Like, yeah. I don't care who's playing. Like, I should be wanting to watch that. And I, and I did want to watch it. A little bit. I think I was traveling probably. Oh, I had COVID <laughs> and I was traveling. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, it was just kind of... And the years before, I was I was actually the greatest beach volleyball match I've ever watched. The greatest beach volleyball experience I've ever had as a fan was World Championships final in... The Hague. The Hague. Yes. I was there during the final. I had played in the quarters actually watched the match before the bronze medal, which was Evandro and whoever he was playing Pedro. with. Evandro and Pedro against Theo and Nick. And that was insane. Yeah. And they kind of they kind of smashed Nick and Theo. But I was there and like, I, I can't miss this. This mm-hmm. is a big deal. And then the final was just the craziest match ever. And it was a final. And yeah. it was, that was just amazing. Um but then this year, same thing. Theo's playing for a medal again in the World Championships. Yeah. And I was just like, eh, eh well, whatever. Yeah. And you've played in, I mean, Hamburg. It's Hamburg you played in World Champs, right? Yeah. We've, and that was, between me, Theo, and... That was amazing. Between me and Theo, we've been in... <laughs> we've been in three of the last yeah. four um, medal rounds. Yeah. And we got fourth every time. Oh, dagger. And then I didn't play in Vienna, so... <laughs> Who knows what would have happened? Yeah. But Vienna packed it. Oh, Vienna! Vienna was packed it. I, Amber I packed was, it. Actually, I watched Vienna from home. Yeah, all skinny. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> and right. Sad. That's all when skinny we started and this sad. podcast. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's tough to make quality content when you're trying to shoot content at events that where there's no fans. The thing is, like, I love the the saying. I don't know who said it first, but LeBron always says it. Keep the main thing the main thing. Yeah. Beach volleyball. Make that an entertaining product. Yeah. That's the focus. All the other stuff can trickle down from there, but make beach volleyball an entertaining thing. That's all the focus should be on, and I don't think anyone's focusing on that. Yeah. They're focusing on how can we make this uh, not-too-risky business right. venture and maybe make some money off of it. Yeah. And... um. If you really look at volleyball itself, it's like, okay, how do we make beach volleyball? The guys playing on the court, or girls playing on the court, very entertaining. You have to create the characters. It's the players. Yeah. Nobody's investing in the players in terms of like building up their celebrity, their superstar, their putting out who they are and what they're about. And yeah. Yeah. <sighs> So that's why the Sandcast is just carrying the sport. Man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Well, quality content. We are. Uh, Sandcast is looking for videographers. Yeah, we are. To actually. make quality content. So if you are a videographer, if you know a videographer, hit up me or try. We love volleyball. On Instagram. We will pay. We, we do have sponsor money now. And we do. We're very open minded and we want to do something really special. Yeah. Like we've been we've actually had a lot of little things that we've tried here and there. My vlog was turned out pretty good. It did do well. We do believe it, it we can do a better job. Um but yeah, we're we're building people and if you have ideas or anyone want that really genuinely like wants to do this kind of work, then hit us up. Yeah. We're in. All right, we'll find we're at an hour 28, 29. Wow. We'll do one more. Okay. Uh, this is kind of a fun one. From Rich Gustafson, who are your dream guests to have on the podcast? <laughs> dream guests? Like that we've already had? 
Uh, no, to to have on. If we could pick anyone in the world that we haven't had on, that we haven't had, or to have on again in the volleyball world. But yeah. So if you could pick any, well, I mean anyone. You know, who I really love having on is Geeter. Yes. Because he's because he's a man, better he's host so than us. <laughs> So, you know, like, know. even if we were to stumble, he would just, like, pick it up and carry it. Yeah. And he just knows the entertainment value of speaking into a microphone. So it's, like, hard to hard to beat Keeter. And then, I mean, <laughs> I don't know if we'll ever beat that that whiskey with the crabs with the Nick Lucena oh and the Sander episode. Like, because the stories Incredible. we had and the perspectives on the Olympic. Also, yeah. sorry for the audio if you go back and listen, because we're handing around lav mics. Yeah. But that was just the perfect storm of great and that one greatness. So we I got the uh, the Spotify wrapped, and that one was by far is like the most shared. The most this is just on Spotify, right? The most shared, most listened to. Um, that one had the biggest global audience. It was our <laughs> most watched on YouTube, I think. I mean that one and that one like fans, man, they cracked me up about that one. If they you heard, if you it. haven't heard that one. It's worth going back to yeah to listening to it. We and that's what I was thinking about like if we, if the season didn't go so late, it would have been so fun to have like like a little season ending party, like a sandcast totally. party here, and just like we could just filter guests through yeah. as they because it's funny. Like I was looking up our most downloaded episodes this year, and two of our top three. We're drinking something with the crabs. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. We were either drinking whiskey or crabs. I don't say that too much because Trevor just claims it. Oh, you're welcome. I'm carrying your podcast. Oh, I'm my like, gosh. Dude, you're a it's piece so of funny. Work. We'll have like, uh, I get people, um, they email me all the time and they're like, we don't get enough uh, like drinking. Taylor Crab and Taylor Sander and Trevor on the podcast. I'm like, Guys, Trevor's been on like seven times. <laughs> He's like, our most frequent. We guest. can't have him on anymore. <laughs> like he he has nothing left to say as it yeah. is. And yeah, he doesn't even talk much. We have to pour alcohol down his throat <laughs> yeah. just to make him talk. <laughs> but man, that was so funny. I think Nick Lucena made that episode as good as it was. There was so many la- layers to it <laughs> that was know. that were good, like the Olympic stories. Yeah, and then you have <clears throat> we had four like very separate. Like people that were in different places. Yeah. Taylor's in Tokyo jail. <laughs> Nick's standing with Jake Gibb in the Olympic Village. Trevor's has his back thrown out in the golf course. And I'm in the middle of the desert with my yeah. daughter. And we're all just like and mapping Sander, these stories and together. Indoor. And Sander was just, yeah, Sander was in the Olympics playing indoor, playing a different sport. Oh, that was a good one. Then we had the girls bartending. Yeah. <laughs> Can't beat that one. So you'd bring back Geeter? Yeah. I think... Uh, I think Geeter, probably... But Geeter and another guest, I think, too. You know? Okay. I, I've been wanting to have Geeter and Richard Jefferson on. That Because he fun. lives down the street. And that's doable. And he's a, because he loves volleyball. Yeah. That's doable. And Richard, like, he knows how to be in front of a mic. Oh, yeah. Well, now he's an a NBA broadcaster. Yeah. We're going to sure. make that happen, actually. Um, that's a real dream. That's tangible. Let's do it. Um, We're make it happen, people. I think mine would be, now that he moved here, I would love to get Alice on. Ooh. Um, he's not... His English isn't the that great. ...best at English, mm. but I think if we can get... I I think we can do it. Maybe we bring Alisson, Dan in with... I think so, tra- He yeah. translated for uh, Leandro pretty or, well. Or Arthur. <laughs> yeah, because like, me and Alison are actually pretty good friends. Because mm. I trained with him a couple times, and he came here last uh, two years ago. And, um, and man, I saw him on the strand. He comes like running up to me. He was like, new father, new father. It's so exciting. I was like, he just gives me this big hug and I just never felt so tiny. (laughs) Alison hugs. Yeah. When he played with, uh, Alvaro was the best. It just swallows him. Alvaro comes in for a slow hug. The Brazilians do the slow hugs because they're trying to rest. That's how they rest. Like, give us time. We're hugging. Yeah. And they come in. Alvaro and yeah, Alison just like. Swallows and come here, my boy. Wraps him up. Yeah. Come here, buddy. <laughs> and it's so funny because when I was training with him, Delaney came up and she was cracking up. She because me and Allison, we look a lot like a fair amount of like in that. the face. We have the the red beards and we're just like thicker right, dudes. Right, right. But she was like, "You just looked like this teeny tiny Allison." Yeah, I don't know if you're as thick as that guy. <laughs> yeah. The mammoth, <laughs> mammoth. <laughs> yeah. So Allison would be a dream guest, and I think. uh I feel like this podcast would just be incomplete if we don't have Carrie. 
Yeah. At that's some true. point we, we need to get her back on. Yeah. At some point we gotta have carry on. Yeah, that's kind of crazy we haven't. Let's do that. Let's yeah. make it happen. So now that she's back, she's in the South Bay. So when you get back from Hawaii. She's living here now? Uh I mean she's training every day. So she's Perfect. somewhere here. Yeah. So we'll okay. uh we'll shoot the text, see what happens. Love that. Yeah. So actually when do you come back from Hawaii? January tenth ish. Okay. She's not gone too long. So we'll be yeah. separate for a little bit. We'll figure it out. We'll be okay. We always do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I can get Belly Diggs on and Carly Khan out there. It'll be fun. Yep. Get a Hawaii cast. All right. Sounds good. All right, homie. Thanks for the questions, everyone. Sorry if you asked and we didn't get to them. We probably had about two dozen other ones we didn't get to. Yeah, we ran We're an hour and 35 in. So Next time. So we love you guys. We will happily sign your autographs and take pictures after we lose. <laughs> and uh, have a great Christmas. Have the best New Year's. Mele Kaliki Maka. Shoots. Shoots.